Hi, Wendy DeBruzen here, Certified Divorce Lending Professional with the Divorce Lending Association and Benchmark Mortgage. And today I have the pleasure of hosting Melanie Johnson. And Melanie is a Certified Divorce Financial Analyst, CDFA. And so Melanie, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and who you are and a little bit of background knowledge about yourself? Thank you, Wendy. Um, I'd love to. So I'm an advisor at Beck Capital and Management, where we manage clients' assets for a fee-only firm. I also own Divorce Financial Solutions, where I'm a CDFA that you mentioned. Um, we have a workshop here in Austin called Second Saturday, What Everyone Needs to Know, that I host with an attorney and a therapist, and we kind of change them out. That's been since 2006, and I'm now the national director for all of the Second Saturday Divorce Workshops across the nation. And they're like in 33 states. There's over 120 of them. Wow. And I, you know, was director of education and I've been helping. So that's a little bit about who, you know, who I am, what I do. I didn't always do this. I was a kindergarten teacher for 12 years, actually, before I did this, went through my own divorce, made mistakes as we, you know, we do. And, and it just it was a passion that I wanted to try and educate people, you know, what they need to know and, you know, if someone says, I wish I would have known you when I was going through my divorce is probably the biggest thing I get, you know. Yeah. Well, and since this is a national podcast, um, tell us a little bit more about the se uh, second Saturday workshop. Is that for anybody who's going through a divorce or thinking about it? Absolutely. So most people have not told their spouse, but people will come in the process of a divorce it's not really a post-divorce workshop. Right. So um, an attorney is going to, it, and because it's state specific with community property, separate property, we have them in, like I said, most states, it is the oldest um, nonprofit organization started in 1989 um, in California. And so the one here in Austin was the seventh one in the US, but you will, if someone goes, They'll hear an attorney speak about how long you need to be in the state, how long you need to be in the county is separate. And, you know, can you file for um, many feel like they can, I'm going to go blank here, but um, uh, separation because some states have them, some states don't. So they're going to get educated legally. And then there's always a marriage family therapist or a divorce coach that speaks on emotional issues. And then someone that's usually a certified divorce financial analyst or a planner will come in and speak on the pitfalls you want to avoid going through a divorce. And many of them across the US have a realtor or someone like yourself that's a lender that specializes in divorce that's certified that will speak on the issues because the home is typically a very large, if not the largest asset. So yeah. it encompasses those things. Some of them are a half day, some are a couple of hours in person, and some are virtual or a combination of the two. Okay. And yours is in person every time? It was until COVID happened. And then we went virtual and now we do what we call a hybrid. So people will be in person and some that cannot attend will actually attend virtually. No, no. at the same time yeah well that's yeah. A, it sounds like a great resource um for for anybody you know just to get some information so so you know if if anyone's thinking about a divorce you know it's it doesn't hurt to to go and listen and and you know hear um you know hear what it's all about and just you know talk to other people going through a divorce it, it's probably uh very comforting is there a cost for this Yes, um, the, the original one started at $45 in 1989, and the one here in Austin is the same price or $50 at the door. There are some that are virtual um, in some states or cities um, that may be free, and they're not in person. So every leader gets to do it and set the price that they want to. Very nice. And hopefully, some, hopefully we'll be able to schedule you to come and talk about the lending part of it. Yeah, I would love that. Important. Yeah. 
I would love that. I mean, it's, it's great just to kind of get the information out because a lot of people just don't even know where to go. You know, all they know is they need to talk to an attorney and there's so many more resources out there for them. So they're not, you know, spending hundreds or more, um, an hour, uh, you know, trying to get some information. So it's great, great place to start for sure. Um, so anybody who's going through a divorce, when they're looking for a financial advisor or a financial analyst, um, what would you, you know, what kind of heads up would you give or what would they look for if they're, you know, starting down this path? So many times, I mean, now we have the Institute for Divorce Financial Analysts, and I believe there's, you know, this, um, Association for Divorce Professionals or Planners also. So having a certification does give that um, advisor information and knowledge of what's going to, the assets you're gonna be dividing. Also about like, um, we'll call it lifestyle planning. Many people are, when they're going through a divorce, that's probably one of the scariest things that my life looked like this. Now we're no longer, think about it, you no longer have just one utility bill, there's two, but you have the same income or less. Yeah. So there's a lot of different things that you need to kind of have um, knowledge about. I can tell you that one of the things that I like to always try to um, help clients with that a lot of uh, attorneys don't always look at because we ask the attorney to wear the legal hat and that's the hat they should be wearing. But then they get someone gets in the office and they're paying, you know, the cost for an hourly. They can go anywhere from 250, which are very difficult to find those attorneys up to 700 or even more an hour. Right. Yeah. Um, just like locally here in the Austin area, different states, similar, more or less range. But when we ask them to wear that hat and you're going in, a lot of times they end up being the th wearing the therapist hat. Well, that's a very expensive a, you know, bill for an, a therapist that you could get in for a lot less than an attorney. Yeah. You know, we'll ask them to wear the realtor hat, the mortgage hat, the financial hat. And if you were to ask me to wear all those hats, I wouldn't do them. I wouldn't, I mean, I might do some of them, right? Yeah. You get knowledge, but being really good, I want to concentrate on one. So yeah. when someone's coming to me and we're looking at what's going on, attorneys will put numbers on the spreadsheet, but what they don't always do is look at um, the tax consequences. Usually a divorce should not be a tax consequence when it's done correctly. But a lot of times, especially if you're the um, under earner and you end up with proceeds, a lot of times you'll have to you know, supplement your income with some of those assets. Yeah. Well, if you're doing that and it's a retirement asset, there are tax consequences. And if you're under 59 and a half, there could be a penalty if it's an IRA, if it's a 401k, we can avoid certain things, but you have to know all of that. If there's a home, you know, we get the capital gains. Um, each one can get, you know, as a married couple, 500,000, if you live there, you know, two of the five years, but if not, then and you're single, it's only 250,000. Right. So I, I love figuring out, a, I love doing puzzles. I love kind of coming up with different things. So the language and the decree can be important, but also tax affecting those assets, because if you're going to get one of them or a larger portion of it, and you're thinking, oh, that's the number on it. And at the end of the day, when you have to cut, you know, Uncle Sam a check and no one told you about it, you're a little upset about it and it change, yeah. can change your situation. So yeah. I like to add that part. And that's why when someone's looking for um, someone um, that will do the financial aspect of the divorce, having those certifications and having knowledge is really helpful. Yeah. Well, and, and that's why I feel like it's important for any divorce team to have all of these resources because attorneys, let's, let's face it, they, they know law. They don't necessarily know tax, you know, tax code. They, some of them probably do, um, but they don't know lending guidelines. They don't know, you know, all of the, um, you know, like I said, the IRS rules and, and any of the implications. They're just focused typically on let's divide everything up, you know, but, but, you know, as, as your job and my job is to 
make sure that there's life after divorce, make sure that they can sustain, you know, and live and, and live comfortably if, if needed and, and what, and just give them their options. So that's great. Any other, um, any other things you can think about that, of how you can assist divorce teams? Well, it's the team, the attorney, the client, like, and for instance, I had a, a, a client who came in, asked, she'd already, um, the decree had already been completed. She'd already received her assets. So she was wanting me to wear the investment hat. And in doing so, she was worried about capital gains. Is she going to pay any of the house? No one had talked to her about it. So she had received 67% of the proceeds, the equity from the house they'd sold. It was about 1.2 million. Um, and their cost basis on the house was around 400,000. Wow. Well, you can see, you know, eight, nine, 900,000 after, you know, commissions and whatnot that came off. And if, if in the decree, the language can be written that they each would take 250,000 and they would also pay 50% of the taxes on that gain, even though she received more of the equity. I've had that written in decrees multiple times for the spouse who was a higher earner did that so the wife could get more cash up front versus the retirement. And it comes down to writing it in the decree. So when I'm looking at her decree, there's nothing about this. She makes zero. He's making 225,000 a year. And there was nothing in there that said, it would be done that way. So she will end up with, you know, a larger percentage of the capital gains to pay with a, no income. And that will come out of her proceeds that wasn't figured in on the spreadsheet when I looked. So unfortunately, yeah. those things get missed. And that's how I can assist teams when they're doing it, because it's kind of, I look at everything as through my eyes as a post-divorce situation. Yeah. which when yeah. the ink is dry, you can't go back and do anything or change it. So let's think of as many things that could happen. Yeah. That's a great point because, you know, in my business, it's the same way. We can't do anything until after everything's final, but if you don't get us ahead of time before everything's final, you know, we're, we, we're limited on what we have to work with um, and, and how we can help, you know, if, 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 you know, I could go on about, you know, refinancing versus keeping the house and all of that. And, and it's just good to know up front and just for that peace of mind to know up front what you can and can't do and what your options are. So um, it's amazing that, that you're there. Tell us um, a little bit about, so I know you, you alluded a little bit to how you're different than, you know, the thousands of financial advisors, but it, it's, it's more about working with divorcing clients every single day versus maybe getting a couple a year. Right. And so your, your knowledge um, is at a higher level when it comes to, you know, planning a divorce. Right. It is in um, Texas, there were um, seven CDFAs total when I started and that was in 2004. Wow. So um, there were, I was like the fourth one here in Austin and there were a few in um, Houston and yeah. so, you know, telling people what I did was probably the biggest thing because there wasn't, there weren't any CDFAs, yeah. but that knowledge that's come from doing case after case. And whereas a client is going to work with one attorney, I've worked with multiple attorneys and gathered knowledge from them all around. So I get to help them with those cases yeah. And bring that knowledge. I do. I never hold myself out as an attorney. They always know we're going to be working with the team, same as a lender, yeah. getting them to get that information. And so if when, you know, uh, the client that I have is we're looking at them getting to keep the home, um, I know that they're going to need to get some pre-approval. There's going to be underwriting. If one spouse wants to stay on it, because of all the experience I have, I know that once they get to underwriting, they can remove it. If the other spouse has been making the payments, there's right. so many of those things that no one thinks about. So yes, that experience does come into it. And I think because I was, um, you know, I always say I never thought I'd be divorced once, little one twice. Yeah. So, you know, I was married at 19, you know, as a teacher, you know, just kind of that whole you know, blue collar. And then the next marriage, it was short, but we acquired different properties, um, commercial and um, 
residential businesses and went through that. It's, it's, and being a teacher, I think I present in that educational manner and helping people look at different scenarios. So those are some of the things I get to bring to the table rather than just being that planner that has just the financial aspect. It's, it's life events that have happened that you can pull from. Yeah. And you also offer like CE um, class, CLE classes for attorneys. I have not. I know that there is an, and some other um, CDFAs that have done that. And it's very helpful. You know, paralegals will attend them and whatnot. I've thought about doing that, but I, my focus is, you know, a lot on the cases, yeah, on the cases with the yeah. attorneys and then the workshops and helping get the word to as many people. Cause as you know, going into attorney's office can be expensive. Yeah. And it also there's something about that almost feels final for, you know, there can be shame around it, unfortunately. So I would love to be able to change that to where yeah. someone wants to be educated. And even if they do not go through a divorce, they have that information that helps them be a better partner in the marriage. Yeah. So those are some of the things. Well, and you have a very calming um, presence. <laughs> so I'm sure it definitely helps when you're, you know, you might be the first person they call when they're even thinking about it. And so I'm sure it's, you know, dealing with, and I've had it too, dealing with people that are, you know, they just don't know where to go. And and so I'm sure after talking to you, they're like, oh my gosh, I feel so much better, you know, just having somebody to talk to without having to spend, you know, like I said, several hundred thousand dollars or several th- not hundred thousand, several thousand dollars, I mean, several hundred dollars, um, calling an attorney, you know, just kind of as a starting point to, to talk to you and talk to me. So um, that's a great place to start. But so you are also involved in a lot of groups, right? You're in, uh, I know we're in Collaborative Divorce Texas together. Um, are there any specific um, types of, of divorces that you would rather work on? Like, collaborative or um, mediation or anything like that? Or do you just do them all? Um, No, I do do all of them. What I always tell everyone is that as wonderful as the collaborative method is, it it ties their hands that if they are not able to um, come to an agreement, then they have to start over. Whereas you can always do it in a collaborative manner that you do not want to go to mediation and you do not want to litigate, but you can still be collaborative. Yeah. And so um, I, you know, I, I, when I play in neutral, I, I play in neutral to a T. So if I'm telling one spouse, these are going to be the pros that you're going to receive if we do it this way, in front of them, I can be telling the spouse the cons to it. And I, you both hear that they get to see that you are truly a neutral, but I think all of us like to be an advocate um, for someone. And so I do that more than I do a neutral, but I I play a neutral really well. Um, At the end of the day, it's appreciated regardless of which way that I'm doing it. But you know, one of the things that, like you said, I do have, I've been told I have that calming manner and you can be compassionate, but when it comes right down to it, we're talking about numbers and we're talking about going to mediation or, you know, you, it's easy to, to lay everything down really black and white. Yeah. When you do that, they get to make a choice, but by no means, I mean, I've been on the, the stand testifying, you know, for a judge, for clients and, um, yeah, I like that just as much if I have to get there. Um, I prefer not to because it's really easy to see the cost of going to court and here's the cost because many people will mistake, oh, well, I need to get 55, 56%. And when you look at a percentage and you turn it into a dollar amount, the dollar amount on that 2% could be 30,000. And I can say, is the percentage more to you or is the dollar in your bank account more to you because we go to court, this is what it's going to cost. And when you can break that down to someone, then they're like, oh, all right, I see what's going on. I understand this. So um, we'll settle a lot more when you break it down into money. Yeah. 
And I, yeah, that's a good point because I think a lot of people don't think about, you know, figuring out which, which is better and, and, and looking at them side by side and realizing, okay, if I'm spending this many more months or this much more time going to court just to get that 2% or whatever, it's, it's probably not worth it. And it's probably definitely not worth the time and headache of it. Right. Um, For the majority, obviously you and I both know that 2% of, you know, 10, 20, 30 million can be a lot more and worth going to court. Right. But when you do break it down, down into it it helps them make that decision much yeah. easier so i'm sure you do you know a whole spreadsheet of giving them their options and and the equity and all of that so i do settlement scenarios and i will give them the 50 50 which i always say is an administrative nightmare who wants to divide everything 50 50 but here we are. And then I'll do different settlement scenarios starting at a high because the attorney, someone's always going to start at a higher amount and a percentage of the division. And then I always tell clients that, you know, your spouse's Achilles heel, you know what they're going to want. We can just make sure they have it and get you something somewhere else. And a lot of people don't do that. They don't yeah. look at it that way. But if I can kind of get into what the other one's thinking. Oh, they want that Coca-Cola stock. They've had it since whatever. All right. It's got tons of capital gains. Let's let them have it. Let's get you something else. Maybe something, maybe they don't have someone like myself on their side, doing the numbers, looking at the gains and we don't even discount it. And your side, I can see that you're going to get assets that are not going to have capital gains. I mean, you hire like someone like myself and someone like you to advocate, to show them what they're doing and to keep them from going to court. It's really nice when you can do it collaboratively. collaboratively. I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> amicably. Hard word to say. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and amicably and end up being able to, you know, go to weddings afterwards, grandchildren together, any of those things. So it is better to come along there, but you know, you do need to look at it and you need to be smart about it. Yeah. And, and that brought up a thought um, to, that I also want to bring up that we are not attorneys. We do not give legal advice. Um, we can suggest, you know, maybe you should ask your attorney this or, you know, bring it up to the attorney Absolutely. ourselves. You should. But, yeah. yeah. But it is good to, you know, for any attorney to have the resource. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that all of them, you know, use you or someone, you know, trained like you as well. So I appreciate, you know, you sharing the time with us. Um, what's, so what's the most, is, are there any important lessons or any big lessons that you've learned throughout your career? Mm, good question. Um, when working with clients, yeah, when working, working with clients or even personally, you know, um, in, in your career path? You know, um, I, I, I guess I, I just think integrity, you know, making sure that when you say you're going to do something and you can help someone and helping them get to the other side of it. Um, cause I, I, I think being able to be compassionate, taking them for understanding what they're going through, but being the, having the, you know, knowledge and um, wisdom to get them through at the other end. I, I just, I don't know how to explain that there's emotional, you know, financial um, wealth and all of that, that if you can yeah. do that, but, um, you know, when you're done and someone says, you know, they're so thankful or, you know, you helped me more than the attorney. It just, it makes you want to continue to do better and learn more. I, yeah. yeah. And it builds trust. I mean, it builds trust. It builds confidence. It, it calms them down, um, you know, and then they're going to also send you to any friends or family that they have as well. So it Absolutely. also does help you. Um, so the you attorneys, know, I think yeah. I've had other attorneys hire me because I was on the other side of a case and they got to see what you brought in and yeah. what you did. So the, you know, the more equipped you are the you know, the better it's going to help your client and everyone else going yeah. you know, going forward. Well, Melanie, I appreciate you sharing your time with us today. Um, so tell us anybody who's looking or in the Austin area looking for your expertise, how could they reach out to you? So um, 
you know, you could just, you know, when you Google Melanie Johnson, usually I'm going to come up, but if you do anything with Melanie Johnson and divorce Austin, but divorce financial solutions is the website for, um, the, you know, the certified divorce financial analyst, anyone that wants to attend a second Saturday throughout the United States and try and find one that's second Saturday.com. You know, a lot of clients end up wanting to, you know, management, they don't want to work with the advisor. So I'm with Beck Capital Management and that's just, you know, the same website you would find that. So, yeah. yeah so now, not only do you do divorce planning, but you do invest, you, you handle, you could handle their investments as well. Yes. I mean, because I've done this so long and people know that I help, you know, those going through transition um, clients who have had a spouse pass away and they're needing planning and they're needing, you know, they got re re received in kind of like insurance money or inheritance, you know, I get those all the time and yeah. work with them. But yeah, I've been doing that also since 2004. So almost 20 years. Wow. Well, you are a great resource. Oh, last thing. Um, if anyone's anywhere else in the, in the nation, where would they be able to find a CDFA? In their area. Um, they go to the Institute for Divorce Financial Analysts. It's okay. institutedfa.com, I believe. Okay. Um, you'd be able to find one, put in your city zip code, and they'll be able to find. There's many more than what there used to be, for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Melanie. Um, Melanie Johnson, CDFA. And any final thoughts you want to leave us with today? Um, no, I just appreciate what, you know, that you're doing and getting the word out there, you know, the lenders, there is definitely a need for that. So like anything else, I don't want to wear that hat. So finding someone, I'm, I'm really glad that you reached out and heard about CDFAs and then the mortgage lenders. So I just think you, like you said, putting a team together is, it's smart. Yeah. It's like a wedding. Think about your wedding. You yeah. had a wedding planner, you had a floral person, you had someone right. to do all of those. So um, you didn't just have one person. Yeah, for sure. All right, Melanie, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Have a good day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.